Let us begin our Mass in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. The Lord be with you. As we celebrate our Mass, we take a few moments to call to mind our sins. Lord Jesus, you are the Good Shepherd. Lord, have mercy. Christ Jesus, you are with us from our birth until we are with you in heaven. Christ, have mercy. Lord Jesus, your sheep know your voice, and they follow you. Lord, have mercy. Amen. May Almighty God have mercy on us. Forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life.
O mighty and living God, lead us to a share in the joys of heaven, so that the humble flock may reach where the brave shepherd has gone before, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. A reading from the Acts of the Apostles. Then Peter stood up with the eleven, raised his voice, and proclaimed that the whole house of Israel know for certain that God has made both Lord and Christ, this Jesus who you crucified. Now when they heard this, they were cut to the heart. And they asked Peter and the other apostles, What are we to do, brothers? Peter said to them, Repent and be baptized, every one of you, in the name of Jesus Christ, for the forgiveness of your sins, and you will receive the gift of the Holy Spirit. For the promise is made to you and to your children, and to all those far off, whoever the Lord, whoever the Lord and our God will call. He testified with many other arguments, and was exhorting them, save yourselves from this corrupt generation. Those who accepted his message and were baptized were about 3,000 persons were added that day. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. First letter of St. Peter. Beloved, if you are patient when you suffer for doing what is good, this is a grace from God. For to this you have been called, because Christ also suffered for you, 
leaving you an example that you should follow in his footsteps. He committed no sin, and no deceit was found in his mouth. When he was insulted, he returned no insult. When he suffered, he did not threaten. Instead, he handed himself over to the one who judges justly. He himself bore our sins in his body upon the cross, so that free from sin, we might live for righteousness. By his wounds, you have been healed. For you have gone astray like sheep, but you have now returned to the shepherd and guardian of your souls. The word of the Lord. Thanks to God. said, Amen, Amen, I say to you, whoever does not enter a sheepfold through the gate, but climbs over elsewhere, is a thief and a robber. But whoever enters through the gate is the shepherd of the sheep. The gatekeeper opens it for him, and the sheep hear his voice. And the sheep and the shepherd calls his own sheep by name and leads them out. When he's driven out all his own, he walks ahead of them, and the sheep follow him, because they recognize his voice. But they will not follow a stranger. They will run away from him, because they do not recognize the voice of a stranger. Although Jesus used these figures of speech, the Pharisees did not realize what he was trying to tell them. So Jesus said again, Amen, amen, I say to you, I am the gate for the sheep. All who came before me were thieves and robbers, but the sheep did not listen to them. I am the gate. Whoever enters through me will be saved and will come in and go out and find pasture. A thief comes only to steal and slaughter and destroy. I come so that they might have life and have it more abundantly. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. Once again, welcome to you. We're celebrating the fourth Sunday of Easter. Jesus uses a simile that everybody in his day would have been familiar with, sheep and shepherds. Today, of course, we know little or nothing about it. But back in his time, a shepherd lived with the sheep, stayed with them, protected them, brought them in and out of the protective gate, brought them to pastures where they could feed, led them to clean water where they could drink, but the reason they trusted him so thoroughly wasn't necessarily because of all that. Because the shepherd was there when they were born. He was there right at their birth. He was the first face that they saw, the first voice that they heard. 
And he gave them a name right when they were born and repeated it over and over again so that they knew their name. They knew who he was and they knew they could trust him and follow him. All those who follow Christ know him. They know his name. They know his way of being. They follow him because they see in him so much good that they want to follow and be a part of. They see his gentleness. They see his kindness. They see his willingness to give for others. They see his willingness to forgive even the most terrible things done to him. They see that, they are amazed by it, and they want to follow him. They want him to be their shepherd, and they want to be his sheep and be his followers. Let's take a few moments to ask God to grant our prayers and our petitions. For all those who are sick, especially with respiratory illnesses, we pray to the Lord, Lord, hear our prayer. For a swift recovery and end to the world pandemic, and for all those who are without work at this time, we pray to the Lord, Lord, hear our prayer. For a true respect for human life from conception to natural death, we pray to the Lord, Lord, hear our prayer. For all those who've died recently, especially for those for whom these weekend masses are being offered, that they may be with God in heaven for all eternity. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For each of our own special intentions, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Father, be with us during these trying times. May our physical and financial recovery be swift and complete. We ask this through Christ, our Lord. sacrifice and yours will be acceptable to God, our Almighty Father. May the Lord accept this sacrifice at my hands for the praise and glory of his name, for our good and the good of all his holy church. Grant, we pray, O Lord, that we may always find delight in these paschal mysteries, so that the renewal constantly at work within us may be the cause of our unending joy, through Christ our Lord. Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just our duty and our salvation at all times to acclaim your Lord, but in this time, above all, to laud you yet more gloriously when Christ our Passover has been sacrificed. Through him the children of light rise to eternal life. 
the halls of the heavenly kingdom are thrown open to the faithful. For his death is our ransom from death, and in his rising the life of all has risen. Therefore, overcome with pastoral joy, every land, every people exalts in your praise. And even the heavenly powers, with the angelic hosts, sing together the unending hymn of your glory as they acclaim. sending down your spirit upon them like the dewfall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread, and giving thanks, broke it, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and once more giving thanks, gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many, for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that our taking of the body and blood of Christ, it would be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world, and bring it to the fullness of charity, together with Francis, our Pope, Daniel, our Bishop, Richard, his administrator, and all the clergy. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection, and all who have died in your mercy, welcome them into the light of your face. And have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with Blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the Blessed Apostles, St. Philip, and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life, may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Roof him and with him and in him, O God Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. teaching we dare to say.
Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days. And by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. said to your apostles, Peace I give you, my peace I give you, look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And let us offer to each other a sign of Christ's peace. Listen to those who are called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word, and my soul shall be healed. May the body of Christ be safe unto eternal life. And let us pray. Look upon your flock, kind shepherd. Be pleased to settle in eternal pastures the sheep you have redeemed by the precious blood of your Son, who lives and reigns forever and ever. Amen. The Lord be with you. Amen. Almighty God bless you, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. The Mass is ended. Let us go in peace. Alleluia. Alleluia. Thanks be to God. Hallelujah, hallelujah.